Okay, welcome to uh, part two of making your uh, own Morant's case. If you, um, if you haven't watched part one, I suggest you do so. In this phase, we're gonna show you how we do the veneer and finish the uh, project. Okay, first of all, this is the contact cement you're gonna use on the veneer. And for the veneer, you get any kind of grade A real wood veneer. This uh, happens to be, to be honest with you, I forgot. It, I know it's not the oak, um, and it's not the cherry, but um, it doesn't matter. <laughs> because in this case, this one's getting painted. And the way you would start, as I mentioned in, in part one, is you do the outline. And what you do is, if this is going to be the top, you line it up on the, you know, your large piece of, veneer and what I do is I try to get a good edge sorry about this it's hard to do with one hand and not break my veneer okay so what you want to do is try and get one edge lined up and it's okay if you overlap just very very slightly because you can always uh, cut that off or, or sand it off but what that does is it allows you to cut just two sides and not just and not have to cut four so um, you want to do the back side because it's much better to cut on the back side you don't get that fragmenting and all you need is a razor knife like this with a brand new blade and the idea is not to cut through on one cut especially on the cross cut you, you want to keep scoring it. It probably takes about four passes to get through on the cross cut and maybe two, maximum three on the, with the grain cut. Okay. Now I've already done this and that's what this piece is. And as I mentioned in part one, uh, for the cutout, don't try and cut it out ahead of time. Get your piece cut, get it glued down. And this is why you don't you don't mount the uh, top piece yet on the box is you'll cut it from the underside so I'm gonna show you how we uh, glue this and uh, what you need to do the way the contact cement works is you coat that side and then you coat this side and I usually do two coats each you know a couple minutes apart so if you do this first and then you do that by the time you finished with that, it's probably ready for this to get a second coat. And by the time you finish this, you get the second coat on there. Now, why is this important? Contact cement is designed so it sticks to itself. If you only did one side, it really wouldn't stick to the other surface. It, it might, but not really well. It's not designed like that. And if you look online uh, at people who do veneer, you would, uh, you'd see information about that. It's, it's kind of unique uh, how that works. All right, so let me get gluing and uh, show you what we got. And then the key part is getting it aligned. You get one shot. I've had it where I've been able to, if I was misaligned when I put it down, uh, lift it enough to get it realigned, but it's rare. So you really get one shot. So what you want to do is start at one end in a corner and, uh, and make sure that 45 is, is pretty much lined up. Let's see how it dries right away. Okay, so that side is done. Now we want to do the veneer. And for the veneer, we just kind of hold it in the air. You could lay it down on a surface, but you're probably going to get stuff over the surface. And if you do it the way I'm showing you, you really won't go over. If you did go over, get a little um, acetone on a rag and wipe it off right away, and you won't have any residue left behind. Uh, like I said, the edges are very important because if you stick them, nothing's going to come up. That would be the most likely place. And technically, I don't have to do two coats. I just do. Because as I found from, from reading and research and in my own, 
it really sticks well. Also, remember your directions because if you've cut a piece and there's even a slight variation in angle, right? Like this is the back here, this is the front, that's the left side, that's the right side. If you don't, it may not line up for you because, you know, uh, to think that it's an absolute perfect square is, is a lot of assumption. So direction from when you, you cut your piece is important. And it doesn't hurt to have just a tiny little bit of overlap because you can trim it. Some guys put a lot of overlap in uh, because they want to trim it. I prefer not to because you run the risk of, of damaging the ends and making little scores. Now I'm to a point where I can't hold it on the edges anymore. So basically what I do is hold it from underneath. I can do this with small pieces. You see, I got what I needed. So now I can set this down and I'm gonna move this other piece of veneer out of the way. And I'm not gonna bore you with the second coat. Okay, um, something I should have mentioned earlier. Okay, I've let this set up and tack for a few minutes. You know, three, four, five minutes is all you need. Uh, just so it's not like just super wet, but sticky. And um, this is a veneer roller. And this is gonna be your friend for making sure all the bubbles are out and, and it's flat. Um, I'm gonna actually use uh, for my own vision, I have close-up uh, magnifiers because I need to see the edge and it's just me because of my eyes. You don't necessarily have to do that. Now again, I said, oh, up. <laughs> remember your sides. And what I'm going to do, and I've got a little bit on the top there, but I'll get that off with some acetone, is get your corner, first corner, and your second corner lined up. You can still push a little bit here. Still pushing. A little tear there, but that's okay. I can pull this. You want that corner lined up. You want this edge right at the edge. You want this front edge right at the edge. Uh, you can pull it over, you can pull it over, and still can move it, still can move it, and I am aligned. Okay, see so there's a little slide give to it. Get that slid to the edge. Okay, now I'm going to take this, and you'll hear it a little bit, it'll make crinkly sounds. Just allows you better contact. I can still slide it a little bit just for that little edge. No one's going to see it because, as I said, this one's going to get painted. And that's why some people leave an overlap and then they trim. Um, but yeah, we're. And I'll show you how you clean the little bit of glue that I got on the edge there from my fingers when I put it down. As long as you're hearing that, it's just the hearing. Hear it, push your ear out. Okay, now, first, before I call that good, let me clean that up and I'll show you what I did. And it turns out I was out of acetone, so I had a little paint thinner. This is not going to harm anything. I have a little spot there. Now, when this dries, it won't harm anything. Okay. And give you a moment. Now, to make sure, acetone dries a lot faster than paint there. Um, it's just all I have at the moment. 
But what I would do is, I have other boards, and I place them over this, and I have some cans of vegetables with a cardboard bottom and everything. And I place them on top of that board, which holds this down. Um, because you want it to, to stay flat. There's that underside. And I'm gonna let this dry overnight because I want it completely dry so that I can carve out that space for the, uh, for the vent. Um, but as I said, I'll put some weight on here. Pretty evenly distributed. And that's all it takes. It's gonna stick, believe me. Try to pull that off. And there you go. You've got it weighted down. And uh, so when that's done and I carve that out and I put the box together, I will show you how we measure for the sides and the front uh, lip pieces. All right, that's good for now.